uh, style of presentation. Normally I have uh, PowerPoints and I have Excel and I'm data driven. But I'm going to talk about it in a slightly different way today. And when I was asked to join today, I started by thinking about the option and uh, some of it, as you've heard, call it hybrid versus removal. I, I, I change that in my mind. I change it to, is it about people or is it about cars? Or as Paul said, about access to the waterfront. And I believe my choice and all of our choices should always be people and especially assuring the future for our children. So I'm happy that Councillor McConnell invited me today because I want to know that choosing people before cars and to try to persuade you that that's the right way to go is in the best interest of our city. So I want to give you some, some view of myself in, at Ryerson. And I think back to 10 years ago when I came to Ryerson. If you think back then, Maple Leaf Gardens was sitting empty. And Ryerson was downtown Toronto, but was really hidden. And there were trucks and there was traffic on our campus where students were crossing. In response to those phenomena, we developed the Ryerson Master Plan that was launched in 2008, and it really was built on three principles. One was design excellence. The second was to celebrate and support density. And the third and the most important was the principle that we call people first. And the university culture called people first was the yardstick under which we measured everything. People First built pride at the university, and in a few weeks we'll see that same pride as both the Pan Am and the Parapan Games. Basketball will be at the Garden, for now what we call Madame. And with the great support from, city, from the city, Gould Street was closed from cars. Imagine. And now on Gould, we have a new photographic gallery already ranked among the best in the world. And this would never have happened unless school was closed and people first was the strategy. This February, we opened the Student Learning Center on Young at Gould as our new campus gateway. And it's true, the building is spectacular. But what is even more spectacular is that the students adopt that building with one, within an hour. Why? Because they were proud owners. And sometimes it means taking a leap of faith. Like when students came to me in 2010 asking for a place where they could test their idea for startups. And five years later, we're number one in Canada and number five in the world. And why? It's because when you bet on people, an idea that seemed improbable could quickly become the next big thing. And this is also my perspective on the Eastern Gardener. It's now about traffic. It's about people. And to be the choice is clear. It's got to be about people. We know it's cheaper to take it down, and that money can be used for priorities that help people. This week, the Toronto Public Health Assessment favored the removal, and that's good for people. The report has a great quote, and I do quote from that report that says, the way cities are built shapes the lives and health of the people who live in them. Jeff Kenworthy, a professor of sustainable cities in Australia, wrote in the Globe and Mail that his research shows that there is already a decline in the reliance on cars in most developed nations as people turn to transit, walking, and cycling. But he goes on to say, and I quote, People in intensive locations are also more attractive to global economy. In other words, choosing people first is economically smart. So the question really, in my mind, is how do we put people at the center of the Gardner decision? How do we invest in the future of our city? Which option is better, hybrid or removal? Which will make us a prouder city? Which will make us a stronger city? Which will better prepare us for our future? Which will attract the extraordinary people to join us and contribute to Toronto? Which of the choices will stand the test of time? Which will
will encourage us to innovate and develop? And which can best coordinate with all the other people strategies that we have, like community hubs, education, transit, environment, tourism, and more? And which of these choices will raise our global reputation? And also, how do we make sure that the gardener does not prevent an unknown future? How do the decisions we make today allow for transportation strategies that are not even invented yet, but will surely come? In every one of these cases, putting people first is the better result. Take down the garden. The great thing about this whole discussion, as Paul said, is we are not alone. There are many, many examples of cities, cities that wrestled with the implication of tearing down an urban highway. And you saw in Paul's presentation the results. The circumstances, of course, are different. But one thing is always the same. No one was ever sorry they made that decision to tear it down. Invariably, the results are good for people. Greater walkability and bike trails. Better green spaces and parks. Better access to the waterfront. A rise in property values and neighborhood desirability. Economic development and modern innovation, and a sense of place. Councillor McConnell began by telling us that this is a lifetime decision. So perhaps the most important of, part of, it, of all of this is to remember that our decision is for our children and their grandchildren. And we can never go wrong in making our decision for them and not our immediate convenience. 